What's going on guys? So today is going to be, uh, it's going to be a seriously geeky knife video. We're going to be talking about a knife design that I've been thinking about making for the past five, six, seven years, something like that. <laughs> And I think I'm finally to the point now where I can attempt to make this knife. This is a seriously complicated knife design. It's going to look super simple on the surface, but I promise you there's a lot of elements to this knife that are going to be a challenge to overcome. The reason that this knife project has been on my mind is because there's not anybody out there who really makes exactly what I want. There is a knife that kind of fits this purpose. And uh, well, I'm gonna show it to you and then we'll talk about the features that I like about it, the features that I don't, and how I think we can improve on this design. All right, so here it is. I know you're thinking a Mora Basic. Right? Yeah, this is the knife that I've been carrying because nobody else really makes a knife that competes with this. Huh? Um, you might be asking yourself, what are you talking about? Because uh, there's plenty of knives out there that are much better than the Mora, but they're not better in one category. This knife with the sheath weighs 3.8 ounces or 110 grams. So the knife that I'm trying to design is essentially a knife that is kind of like the Mora Basic, except in the fact that uh, I need a little bit more blade length. Well, I'd like to have a lot more blade length. I want to get rid of the plastic handle because, you know, the handle is comfortable and all, but the problem with the plastic handle is the fact that, uh, well, the plastic handle is a structural element in this knife, which means if the plastic handle snaps in two or simply cracks, you might as well chuck this thing into the woods because it's worthless. But the thing is, is that this Mora is still super lightweight. And if you're gonna go as lightweight as possible, then you have to make compromises, right? Well, what if you didn't? What if you could design a knife that was as lightweight as humanly possible, but didn't lose any capabilities? for the intended purpose. Well, let's talk about that intended purpose real quick. This is what we call fun. We're not making good time. The Google uh, satellite map and the uh, map that I, the state forest map don't really match up to what we're experiencing here on this road. Now the intended purpose for this knife for me is going to be a backpacking knife. Now I know a lot of backpackers who they carry giant knives like this and there's nothing wrong with carrying a big knife like this and in fact this makes a really good backpacking knife if you don't mind carrying the weight. If you're going to be setting up a base camp somewhere this is the knife that I would take. However there's another style of backpacking where you go out for maybe a week at a time and you're hiking 15 to 20 miles a day for the entire week. So carrying a big knife like this, which weighs, let's see, 8.75 ounces or 248 grams. For me, in most of the situations that I'm in while backpacking, it's, it's just too heavy. This right here, normally the trail will go like straight up through this rock field and it'll be like that for 10 miles. If I was setting up a base camp somewhere, I would take this knife. If I was winter hiking, camping, backpacking, I would most likely take this knife. I want a more capable knife. But for the rest of the year, I don't want to carry this. I want to carry a knife that does exactly what I needed to do and nothing more. And exactly what I needed to do is essentially simple cutting tasks as well as being super lightweight. And both of those things seem like it would be fairly easy to design a knife around. 
Except for the fact that I also want to be able to baton. Yeah, I want to be able to baton and make a one stick fire. I want fire capabilities out of this knife. And that is where this knife, the more basic, really falls short in my opinion. Let's quickly recap here about all of the design elements that this knife must have. First one is it has to be lightweight. Now, what is lightweight? Well, let's put a number on it. Let's say that this knife has to be, without the sheath, it has to be under three ounces. That's pretty light, right? And this knife also has to be able to be strong enough to baton through, again, let's put a number on it, a three and a half inch piece of oak. Now the last set of design parameters that I wanna talk about is this knife has to include scales. It has to have a handle on it. Um, now you could make a skeletonized knife that's extremely light, but the problem with skeletonized knives are is they're not usable. In my opinion, they're not usable whatsoever. Yeah, you could use them as letter openers or to open up a box or a package that came in the mail, but go out and try some feather sticking with a fully skeletonized knife and you're gonna hate life. My arm's gonna be so sore. Oh. They're just not usable in my opinion. Now, you could wrap paracord around the handle and make it a little bit more comfortable. But again, this is all my opinion. Paracord in itself does not make a great handle material. It's super slippery and it's actually heavy. It's heavier than I think you'd realize, especially when we're talking about making a knife handle out of it. Cause you gotta wrap a lot of paracord around that handle to get a usable, um, a usable handle. Um, and I know somebody's going to uh, say, well, what about the fact that you would have extra paracord on you in an emergency situation? Emergency situation. Oh, I just fell. And you know, for me personally, if I was in an emergency situation, the last thing that I wanna do is take the handle off my knife. I don't wanna make my knife less usable in an emergency situation. This is steep simply because I need some cordage. If I'm gonna carry extra cordage, I'm just gonna carry extra cordage. It seems kind of silly to me, and I don't know if that's, if maybe that's ever happened. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure it has, but I think that that would be kind of a silly thing to do is make your, make your like number one tool less usable because you need some cordage. I don't know. Now, with all this being said, um, all of our design parameters sort of laid out, and there may be a couple that I missed. baton. With all that being said, uh, I made a couple of prototypes with these design parameters in mind. Let me show you what those look like. So before I show you my prototypes, keep in mind that these are kind of rough around the edges because they are prototypes. It's not something that I was intending to sell or anything like that. And I didn't want to waste a ton of money on abrasives finishing something to the nth degree if, uh, I was just gonna keep it or just beat the crap out of it, testing it. So, let's look at the first knife. Yeah, I know, kind of anticlimactic, right? Let's look at it. Now, this knife is eighth inch thick, 1084. We do have a hollowed out handle section here. And uh, this knife is fully capable of batoning. I tried, I, I batoned for like three hours with this thing and I couldn't break it. And I tried to break it doing stuff that I would never do in the real world. It wouldn't break. So I'm completely confident that this knife would do everything that I needed to do. The blade length on this is, well, I'll have to put it in a title because I don't have a tape measure. The blade length on this is what it is, what it says there on the screen. Um, so it, it sort of fits all my design parameters. It has a real handle on it. And to tell you the truth, as weird as this handle looks, 
And as thin as it is, this is actually a really comfortable handle. I mean, it's, it was crazy to me because I thought that this was going to be so uncomfortable that I wouldn't even be able to use it, but it is surprisingly comfortable. There's a ton of grip on this and uh, I can feather stick with this thing all day long. Not a problem. It, it's not uncomfortable for me to use in the slightest. So it's still a super usable knife. So let's see what this thing weighs. What does it weigh? That's the question. Drum roll. 3.85 ounces or 109 grams. Let's compare that with the Mora. So essentially it is a little, a tiny bit over an ounce heavier. I mean, look at the blade length difference. That to me is significant. We still have a super usable handle and we have a ton of extra blade. And here's the, here's the big thing. Look at the difference in blade thickness here. Eighth inch, which is 125 thousandths versus um, this is I think 80 thousandths. So we're significantly thicker, significantly stronger blade here in that regard. So the issue is now is uh, it wasn't under my, my three ounce mark. So that's no good. How are we going to cut more weight off of this? Well, I made a second knife. And this knife does not have scales on it. This knife is a convex grind, as you may or may not be able to tell. I was hoping that with the convex grind, I'd be able to shave a little bit more weight off of the blade. Now, another thing with this knife is the cutting edge is actually slightly longer because we've got rid of our sharpening choil there, which we don't really need. Um, and also the sharpening choil in my opinion, it's just another place for the knife to fail because we're essentially removing a little bit more strength in this area and we really don't need it. And this knife did come in slightly lighter. I weighed this one uh, before I put the scales on it and I believe it weighed 2.8 ounces without the scales. So let's see what we uh, weigh in at. 2.85 ounces. This knife right here weighs 2.5 ounces. With that being said, I cut out some scale material. And this is essentially how much our handle scale material weighs. It weighs about an ounce, which uh, the rest of the world is uh, 29 grams. So right now we're sitting at 3.5 ounces and that's without hardware, but um, the hardware weighs um, practically nothing by the time we make it this tiny. And uh, that's also without epoxy. Um, epoxy adds weight too. So by the time we add all this, I think we're going to end up with a knife. And this is kind of guesstimating here. I think we're going to end up with a knife that is two tenths of an ounce lighter. So if we have to cut a half an ounce worth of weight off of this knife, where are we going to do that? Where are we going to cut even over a half an ounce worth of weight off this knife? Because obviously lighter is better. Well, the handle material, these scales weigh an ounce or I'm gonna try and get the rest of the world measurements in here is 29 grams. So half an ounce a piece. Well, we could cut probably, I don't know, we could probably cut a half an ounce worth of weight out of this knife by switching scale material to something really expensive, carbon fiber. Carbon fiber is going to be lighter than G10 for sure. How much lighter, I don't know. I have some coming though, and I'm gonna find out. I'm guessing, and this is just a guesstimate here, I'm guessing that those carbon fiber scales are going to be about a half an ounce lighter than these two. I think that they're gonna be um, a half an ounce for each scale. If somebody out there knows how much carbon fiber weighs compared to G10, let me know what percentage roughly. We're definitely capable of making a knife that fits all of these parameters under three ounces. The other problem with that is the fact that carbon fiber is not cheap. Uh, we're not talking about a couple bucks here. We're talking about like 50 bucks more expensive per knife. Um, that, that's a lot of money. But if we did use carbon fiber scales, which uh, technically does fit within our design parameters, we would get a knife that's really close to that, that, that 2.99 ounce mark. And again, that's super exciting because I think there's still a lot of weight to lose in this knife, simply for the fact that this is eighth inch thick stock. Now notice when I was listing these design parameters, I did not say something specific. I didn't say edge retention. Now I know this is probably gonna 
cause a little bit of controversy here, but I'm not interested in the ultimate edge retention in this knife. What I'm interested in is a knife that's not going to break, is a knife that is going to retain a knife-like shape under basically any circumstances this knife would come in contact with. And for the purposes that this knife is going to be used for, edge retention is really not that important. We're talking about feather sticking here and batoning, maybe cutting open a dehydrated meal here or there, cutting some paracord or some Dyneema. Uh, none of those things are super taxing on edge retention. And over the course of a week-long backpacking, hiking trip, bike packing trip, um, I don't think that you would ever have a problem with edge retention because again, none of those tasks are super taxing on edge retention other than the fact that you need a tough edge. So I think that toughness in this situation is a lot more important than um, abrasive edge retention. So with those couple of things said, if we're interested in nothing but toughness, what's one way that we could, we could make this knife even lighter but still have the same strength? Well, we could make it thinner and we could use a much tougher steel. Now 1084 is super tough. It's super tough. Um, on paper, it's tougher than 1095 with the, uh, with the correct uh, temper. I am constantly surprised about how tough it is. But the crazy thing is, is that on paper, they make tougher steels. So what if we used a thinner stock with a much tougher steel? How light? <laughs> I know this is not gonna make sense to a lot of you. But how light could we get this knife if we, uh, if we pulled out all the stops and used a ridiculously tough steel and a thinner stock, as well as carbon fiber scales with loveless bolts, basically an indestructible knife that weighed a lot less than three ounces. Hopefully, that's the question. And that's what we're gonna find out. 